The 2020s have been a popular setting among science fiction filmmakers going back decades. We've seen Elizabeth Moss remind everyone that she's one of the best actors working today. And we've seen Brandon Cronenberg, son of David Cronenberg, come into his own as a director. It's a great time to be sci-fi fan, but which film should you be watching? Without further ado, here are the 7 best sci-fi movies of 2020. Before we start our list, if you're new here make sure to subscribe. Sonic the Hedgehog it looks set to join the long list of terrible video game adaptations when the first trailer dropped and fans reacted to the titular character's design with a mixture of disappointment and horror. Sonic looked far too realistic, making him appear more creepy than cheeky. Twitter took aim at the VFX team's bizarre choices, Sonic's human-like teeth being the biggest offender. But in an unexpected move that ultimately paid off, Paramount agreed to a complete redesign of the eponymous Blue Hedgehog. The end result was a charming and entertaining family film that imagined Sonic, voiced by Ben Schwartz, as an alien who comes to Earth to hide from those seeking to exploit his super speed. It didn't do much for the average critic, but it was a real hit among Sonic fans. Director Jeff Fowler's movie wound up with a lukewarm 64% rating on the tomato meter, however 93% of audience reviewers enjoyed watching Sonic and James Marsden's Sheriff Tom Wachowski take on Jim Carrey. Vivarium Irish director Lorcan Finnegan's sophomore feature film, Vivarium plays on what research suggests is a very real fear for millennial couples, settling down and having kids. When Tom and his girlfriend, decide to buy their first home, they visit a real estate agent who tells them about Yonder, a new suburban development. The couple decides that living among rows of identical houses isn't for them long before the creepy agent vanishes, but when they try to leave, they discover that every road leads back to the house he showed them. Did we just do some kind of loop? Things go from weird to weirder when an alien baby turns up on their doorstep along with a note that says the couple won't be released from the bizarre home until after they've raised the child. Vivarium debuted at Cannes and was released in March 2020, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Vast swathes of people were isolating in their homes at the time, and Finnegan admitted that there were definitely some weird parallels with his movie. The critics couldn't help but take the timing of the release into account in their reviews, with vague visages, via Rotten Tomatoes, calling Vivarium the ideal isolation horror. Sea Fever A 2020 sci-fi film that took on new meaning during the COVID-19 pandemic. Nisa Hardiman's critically acclaimed feature-length debut Sea Fever follows a marine biology student who buys her way onto a fishing trawler so she can conduct research into faunal behavioral patterns. Sea Fever is, essentially, alien on the open water. Hardiman pays homage to that film's director, Ridley Scott, with some squirm-inducing body horror, and she creates the same kind of claustrophobic tension that made Alien so enthralling. Straight through the steel. The director told Quiet Earth that their boat was positioned days away from shore during the shoot, creating a genuine sense of isolation among the cast. It's really disturbing being on the boat because it leads to a kind of collective agoraphobia, she said, adding, there you are on the top of one of the least understood biospheres on planet Earth. We know more about the surface of the moon than we do about the deep ocean. The Platform Spanish sci-fi thriller The Platform takes place inside a so-called vertical self-management center, a tower-like structure that houses hundreds of inmates. Every day, a platform filled with enough food and drink for everyone descends from the top level, though many routinely go hungry. The point of the platform is that it isn't about a war between those above and those below. We all have someone above us and someone below us. The film follows Goring, who's duped into volunteering for a six-month stint in the tower in exchange for a diploma. After seeing the conditions on the lower levels with his own eyes, he decides to take matters into his own hands. The platform's ambiguous ending didn't turn off the critics, who overwhelmingly enjoyed it. A gnarly mashup of midnight movie and social commentary, with genre jolts and broad messaging in equal measure. The Invisible Man Back in 2017, The Mummy was supposed to be the first film in a new cinematic universe, but the so-called Dark Universe was called off when the Tom Cruise-led blockbuster flopped at the box office. The original plan was to have Johnny Depp star in the second Dark Universe film, though he was dropped from The Invisible Man when the studio decided to take a new approach. Lee Winnell was brought in to direct, and he was given the freedom to make a film that didn't have to include any links to future franchise installments. The result was a thrilling standalone sci-fi horror flick that blew the critics away. When else remake stars Elizabeth Moss as Cecilia Cass, a woman who believes she's being stalked by her controlling and violent ex, despite the fact that he committed suicide after she escaped from him. This is what he wants. This is what he used to do when we were together. He wants you to think that I did it. This is what he does. Cecilia's paranoia leads her back to the huge house that she shared with loaded optics engineer Adrian Griffin, where her mounting suspicions are confirmed. 
She discovers one of Adrian's invisibility suits. Before Cecilia can prove her story, however, her invisible tormentor gets incredibly violent, forcing Cecilia to fight for her life. Moss delivers a typically committed performance, and she helped out off-camera too. The Vast of Night Extraterrestrial period piece The Vast of Night was made for a fraction of the budget allocated to some of 2020's best science fiction movies, but you wouldn't necessarily know it by watching it. The film follows switchboard operator Faye and radio DJ Everett, two young adults who set out to investigate the source of a strange frequency they're both picking up. You're calling! Debuting writer-director Andrew Patterson pulled out every trick in the indie book to bring his 1950s set sci-fi to life, creating some beautiful and highly buzzed about tracking shots with nothing more than a digital camera gimbal and a go-kart. The whole film was shot in the small New Mexico town of Whitney, where the locals were more than willing to help. In fact, Patterson borrowed the aforementioned go-kart from a local team. The Vast of Night made its festival debut in 2019 and was quickly snapped up by Amazon, who released it on Prime in May 2020. This is something I'm very proud of, Patterson said of his first film during an interview with the Movable Fest. I think it landed at the best place where it's going to live for a while at Amazon. Now I really hope it can become the kind of thing that people watch for several decades. The film, which presents itself as being part of a fictional anthology series called Paradox Theater, has a certified fresh rating of 92% on Rotten Tomatoes at the time of this writing, so this indie sci-fi flick is definitely worth your time. Color Out of Space Nicolas Cage got back to his gonzo best in Color Out of Space, a superbly executed, pulp-heavy sci-fi based on H.P. Lovecraft's short story The Color Out of Space. It was the author's personal favorite, and it also means a lot to director Richard Stanley, whose mother was a huge Lovecraft fan. So when the chance to direct a big-screen adaptation of The Color Out of Space came, Stanley decided to get back in the game, and his return was a critical success. Color Out of Space follows farmer Nathan Gardner and his family, who are thrown into a purple-tinged nightmare after a meteorite that's harboring an extraterrestrial organism lands on their property. A strange alien color spreads across their farmland, causing the animals to mutate and turning the plants sentient. It's a mind-bending experience that only Stanley could have pulled off, according to Cage. Of all the filmmakers I could imagine doing this and getting close to creating an alien color, it would be Richard, the actor said at the Toronto International Film Festival, where Color Out of Space premiered. Here we end out list, comment what's your favorite sci-fi movie of 2020. If you like this video make sure to like and share with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe.